In light of the $3 million sum, I have resolved to allocate it between my mother and myself. This determination arose promptly subsequent to the solemn occasion of my father's funeral. Jack, having perused the inheritance papers without solicitation, audaciously interjected to me, Kelly, cautioning against excessive avarice. Ah! Uh. At long last, I shall be able to relinquish my occupational obligations. I must express gratitude to that aged gentleman of paternal relation. Pray tell, are you referring to my dear departed father? In a moment of confusion, I found myself in a tense situation as Jack and my mother-in-law excitedly discussed their plans for a new car and shopping. Overwhelmed by emotions, I struggled to contain my anger as I was burdened with household chores and asked for money, all while feeling insulted by their behavior towards my father. It was becoming increasingly clear to me that I could no longer bear living with Jack and my mother-in-law. Despite my inner turmoil, I put on a brave face and allowed them to use the money, introducing myself as Kelly Cohan, a 38-year-old housewife who had once dreamed of becoming a doctor like my parents. However, after my mother's sudden passing and finding solace in Jack's support, I had embarked on a different path in life. Despite our differences in career choices, Jack and I believed in our ability to overcome any obstacles and lead a happy life together. Upon announcing our engagement, my father expressed his joy, while also thanking Jack for his support towards me. Jack, standing tall and promising to make me happy, filled me with happiness. The following week, we visited Jack's family home to share the news of our upcoming marriage. However, Jack's mother, who was divorced and made a judgmental remark about my suitability as Jack's choice, quickly changed her tune upon learning about my family's financial status. Despite the smooth approval of our marriage, I couldn't shake off a sense of unease. Before registering our marriage, my father gifted me a luxurious apartment in New York City, which I suggested we make our new home. Jack happily agreed, and our married life began. However, I soon realized that Jack lacked basic household skills and showed no interest in learning them, causing a rift in our shared responsibilities. In the initial phase of our marriage, Jack's nonchalant demeanor only served to amplify my discontent. Despite being caught up in the enchantment of the honeymoon period, I assumed sole responsibility for all household tasks, albeit with a few grievances. However, the exhaustion from my professional endeavors, coupled with the struggle to maintain the household, pushed me to my breaking point. In our second year together, I summoned the courage to approach Jack regarding the equitable distribution of domestic duties. To my dismay, his response lacked gratitude or introspection, as he simply retorted that he, too, was fatigued from work. He further insinuated that my prowess in handling household chores surpassed his own, consequently suggesting that I should continue to shoulder the burden. Thus, Jack's assistance with the household duties remained scarce, and I continued to bear the weight of our shared responsibilities. Yet, this was not the sole predicament plaguing our union. After marrying Jack, I discovered that his mother harbored rather peculiar notions. Regrettably, Jack displayed minimal interest in seasonal celebrations. Consequently, in an attempt to bridge the gap, I decided to bestow upon his mother a meticulously selected scarf and a bouquet of carnations for Mother's Day. Despite having procured a lovely scarf from a reputable department store, her reaction was far from appreciative. Instead, she criticized the gift, deeming it unworthy due to its lack of a prestigious brand name. I endeavored to elucidate the superior quality of the item, but my explanations fell on deaf ears, as she obstinately insisted on receiving items exclusively from an eminent luxury brand. This encounter left me utterly astounded. Upon Jack's return home, I mustered the courage to share my grievances. However, rather than offering solace, he dismissed my concerns as mere trivialities. It became apparent that he did not align with my perspective. Consequently, we acquiesced to his mother's incessant demands for financial assistance, a practice that persisted throughout the years of our matrimonial union. 
Jack, ever the dutiful son, would amiably comply, wearing a perpetual smile as he handed over the requested funds. Although gainfully employed, Jack's income remained meager and insufficient, rendering our daily existence a precarious balancing act. Desperation forced me to deplete our savings in order to alleviate the strain on our finances. Despite my mounting frustrations, I understood the profound significance of Jack's bond with his mother, who had provided unwavering support during my darkest hours. She was, after all, the progenitor of someone who held immense importance in my heart. Thus, armed with this conviction, I persevered. As our eighth year of matrimony unfolded, I shouldered the burden of all household responsibilities while continuing to provide for my mother-in-law's financial needs. It was during one such mundane routine that I received an unexpected call from my father, a figure I had not crossed paths with in quite some time. The tale he disclosed during our rare encounter left me dumbfounded. He unveiled his grim reality as a terminally ill patient, devoid of any remaining treatment options. Overwhelmed by this shocking revelation, I found myself at a loss for words. Tears cascaded down my cheeks as my father tenderly caressed my head, offering words of comfort and acceptance in the face of fate. Balancing work, household responsibilities, and caring for my ailing father became a delicate dance, made more challenging by the lack of support from my husband, Jack. As I devoted myself to my father's care, Jack's indifference became more apparent, causing me to question the state of my marriage. In a moment of vulnerability, my father reassured me that my happiness should not be sacrificed for the sake of others. His passing brought a wave of sorrow and the realization that I must prioritize my own well-being moving forward. However, Jack displayed a complete lack of interest in my sorrow and offered no assistance with the necessary preparations. Nevertheless, I found myself too preoccupied with the somber arrangements for the funeral to truly take notice of Jack's indifference. The ceremony itself was attended by numerous friends and acquaintances, transforming it into a poignant farewell. Surprisingly, even Jack and his mother graced us with their presence on that solemn day. Following the funeral, I received a call from a lawyer regarding my father's inheritance. I promptly arranged a meeting with the legal representative, eager to hear the details of this unexpected news. Upon returning home, I laid out the documents bestowed upon me by the lawyer upon my desk, diligently poring over their contents. The weariness from the day's events eventually overwhelmed me, causing me to succumb to a brief slumber on the sofa. Upon awakening, I discerned the cheerful voices of Jack and his mother floating from a distance. Perplexed, I inquired as to their presence. Jack, sporting a radiant smile, approached me and exclaimed, Well done, Kelly. Bewildered, I questioned the reason behind his congratulatory remark. To my astonishment, the information relayed to me was entirely novel and rather astounding. After accounting for taxes, including the onerous inheritance tax, my late father's estate amassed a staggering sum of over three million dollars. It became apparent that he had not only garnered a substantial income as a physician but had also ventured into real estate investments, bequeathing this vast fortune solely to me, his beloved daughter. Wrapped in a mixture of surprise and gratitude, I found myself trembling at the daunting prospect of managing such a colossal amount of wealth. Nevertheless, I resolved to proceed with the intricate process of inheritance. Perplexed by his unexpected excitement, I observed the papers in Jack's possession, which happened to be the inheritance documents I had obtained from the lawyer. I was taken aback and irate that Jack had taken it upon himself to peruse the documents without my consent. I scolded him for his actions, but my mother-in-law seemed unfazed and even expressed delight at the prospect of a three million dollar inheritance. I couldn't comprehend her sudden enthusiasm. Jack then took a more somber tone and revealed his decision to split the inheritance between himself and his mother. It was a moment that occurred shortly after his father's funeral, and I was taken aback by his audacity in assuming control over my rightful inheritance. 
Kelly, he said, do not let greed cloud your judgment. It was at that moment that I realized I could finally leave my job behind. I owe a certain gratitude to that elderly man, who happens to be my father. The slip of my tongue inadvertently revealed my thoughts. Nevertheless, let us proceed with the matter of inheriting his wealth and swiftly deposit it into our shared account. The sudden turn of events has left me bewildered. Meanwhile, Jack and my mother-in-law excitedly discussed purchasing a new car during their shopping spree. They would depart in the mornings, only to return with extravagant purchases they had indulged in. The three-star restaurant we visited today did not live up to our expectations. It was rather lackluster for individuals of our sophistication, they conversed, as if they had become affluent celebrities. Meanwhile, they assigned all household chores to me, treating me as if I were their personal maid. Jack seemed to believe that my father's inheritance would arrive imminently. Consequently, he carelessly withdrew funds from our joint account, causing my savings of $100,000 to rapidly dwindle. When I voiced my concerns about their excessive spending, Jack simply laughed it off. Why worry when $3 million is on its way? This kind of expenditure is inconsequential, he asserted. I cautioned him, stating that I had already put an end to it, but Jack completely disregarded my words. A month later, Jack and my mother-in-law abruptly departed for a trip to Hawaii, leaving me behind without an invitation. Alone at home, I pondered my next move for about a week. As I luxuriated in the comfort of my dwelling, a thunderous knock on the door startled me. Curiosity consumed me as I peered at the intercom monitor, revealing the unmistakable figures of Jack and my mother-in-law adorned in vibrant aloha shirts. Composed yet seething with anger, I inquired, What is your purpose here? Jack's voice erupted in frustration, demanding an explanation for the door's obstinacy. With unwavering conviction, I calmly replied through the intercom, I have taken the liberty of altering the locks, hence the door's resistance. Bewildered, they questioned my motives, to which I proposed a civilized discourse at a nearby café. Please proceed, and I shall join you shortly, I suggested. Jack and his mother, after futilely venting their ire at the entrance, eventually conceded and made their way to the café. Only when I confirmed their departure did I embark on my own journey to join them at the designated meeting spot. Jack and his mother, who had arrived earlier, were waiting in a state of fury. Jack demanded the new keys to the house, but I calmly handed them a divorce petition instead. Jack, shocked and angry, questioned my decision, while his mother expressed confusion. I pointed out their lavish spending habits and questioned their financial stability. Jack checked their joint bank account on his phone, only to discover that the money was gone. I revealed the truth to them as they struggled to understand the situation. I'm divorcing you. So I transferred that $50,000 into my account under the real estate division. What do you mean? Jack's face turned to anger for a moment but then he grinned as if he was remembering something nice. I'm going to divorce you. Then transfer your father's inheritance straight away. After all, in a divorce, all assets acquired during the marriage are divided in half, right? Well, maybe you are misunderstanding something, I replied, why didn't you know that the inheritance I received, even though it was during our marriage, does not count when dividing property? There was a moment of silence between us. Then Jack and his mother's expressions changed drastically. Maybe they really believed that they would receive a part of my inheritance. I was simply amazed and could only sigh in disbelief. No, that can't be true. This is not possible. Her countenance flushed crimson with a blend of denial and ire. Please verify for yourself, I uttered, dripping with disdain. Jack, gripped with panic, furiously scoured his smartphone. 
According to this, any property bequeathed to a spouse from a progenitor is deemed separate property, thereby exempt from division and incapable of being apportioned between the partners, he blurted out incredulously. What? Seriously? Jack's mother too, stared at the screen in utter disbelief. Subsequently, Jack approached me, beseeching and desolate, Kelly, I implore you, please do not dissolve our union. I possess no savings and am bereft of employment. How am I expected to subsist if you proceed with this divorce? Confronted with Jack's wounded innocence, I addressed him with unequivocal clarity and unwavering determination. What on earth are you babbling about? Assume responsibility for your actions. I shall never forget the manner in which both of you mistreated me. I am divorcing you. I shall take this matter to court if necessary. Intimidated by my resolute demeanor, a facet of my character hitherto unseen by them, Jack and his mother recoiled in fear, whimpering faintly, leaving the pair dispirited. I departed the café thereafter. Eventually, Jack and I successfully navigated the divorce proceedings without encountering any obstacles. The $50,000 I discreetly transferred from our joint account was duly acknowledged as part of the equitable distribution of marital assets. Eventually, I triumphed in evicting Jack and his mother from my abode. In the wake of his reckless spending and depleted funds, Jack found himself destitute. Burdened by the weight of mounting bills stemming from extravagant trips abroad and other lavish expenses, his credit card spiraled into insurmountable debt. To keep up with these payments, both Jack and his mother were compelled to accumulate further financial obligations, leading them to reside in a dilapidated apartment. The jarring disparity between their current circumstances and their former opulent lifestyle proved a tremendous shock. Conversely, I made the decision to sell the jointly owned condominium and relocate to my late father's apartment. While I remain diligently employed, the inheritance bestowed upon me by my father has afforded me a comfortable existence, for which I am profoundly grateful. Envisioning a fresh start, I am determined to safeguard my happiness and embrace a tranquil existence in the days ahead. Basking in the newfound serenity of her life, Kelly allowed herself to blossom into the individual she had always envisioned becoming. Steadily, she began to rediscover the passions that had once ignited her soul, those aspirations that the tumultuous nature of her marriage had gradually eroded. Her inherent love for the sciences, that burning curiosity which her father had so lovingly nurtured, rekindled within her breast. Emboldened by this resurgence of fervor, she made the pivotal decision to pursue a medical degree, a path she had been forced to forsake in the throes of her previous life's turmoil. The inheritance from her father provided the financial means to realize this long-held dream, affording her the opportunity to immerse herself fully in her studies without the constraints of financial burdens. With an unwavering determination emblematic of her resilient spirit, Kelly devoted herself wholeheartedly to her academic pursuits, her intellect sharpened by the adversities she had endured. As the years unfolded, Kelly's dedication and brilliance shone through, earning her accolades and respect from her peers and professors alike. The road was arduous, fraught with countless sleepless nights and an unrelenting commitment to her craft, but the prospect of honoring her father's legacy and fulfilling her own aspirations propelled her ever forward. Upon the momentous occasion of her graduation, Kelly stood tall, her eyes glistening with tears of pride and accomplishment. The tasseled cap upon her head symbolized not only the culmination of her academic journey but also a testament to the indomitable strength of the human spirit. As she strode across the stage, diploma in hand, the echoes of her father's unwavering belief in her resonated within her heart, buoying her spirits. With her newfound credentials, Kelly embarked upon a career in medicine, her passion ignited by a profound desire to alleviate the suffering of others. She dedicated herself to her patients, imbuing each interaction with a level of empathy and compassion born of her own tribulations. 
In the eyes of those she treated, she saw not merely physical ailments but rather the complex tapestry of human experience, woven from threads of joy, sorrow, and resilience. In the quiet moments between consultations, Kelly would often reflect upon the winding path that had led her to this juncture, a journey paved with both triumph and heartache. The memory of Jack and his mother, once a source of anguish, now served as a poignant reminder of the growth and self-discovery that can blossom from the depths of adversity. As the years elapsed, whispers of Jack's plight trickled through the grapevine, painting a picture of a man whose fortunes had plummeted in the wake of his callous pursuit of wealth. Kelly learned that the lavish lifestyle he had once coveted proved to be a mere facade, crumbling under the weight of its own excess. In the end, Jack found himself destitute, a cautionary tale of the perils of greed and the transient nature of material possessions. While a fleeting pang of sympathy would occasionally surface, Kelly swiftly recognized the folly of dwelling on the past. Her life had blossomed into a vibrant tapestry, woven with the threads of hard-won wisdom, resilience, and a deep appreciation for the profound bonds that truly mattered. In the twilight of her days, Kelly would often gaze upon the cityscape from the balcony of her father's apartment, the very dwelling that had once symbolized the promise of a brighter future. As the golden hues of the setting sun danced across the horizon, she would allow her mind to wander, retracing the footsteps that had led her to this point of profound contentment. It was in these moments of tranquil reflection that she would offer a silent prayer of gratitude, not only for the fortitude that had guided her through the tempests of life but also for the unwavering love of her father, whose legacy had served as her lodestar, illuminating the path to personal fulfillment and inner peace. As the years rolled by, Kelly's career as a physician flourished, her reputation for compassionate care and medical expertise preceding her. She found immense fulfillment in her work, deriving profound satisfaction from each life she touched, each ailment she helped alleviate. Yet, amid the hustle and bustle of her professional endeavors, a yearning for something more began to stir within her soul. It was on a crisp autumn evening, as she gazed wistfully out of her office window, that the profound realization dawned upon her, the inheritance her father had bequeathed her was not merely a financial endowment but a sacred trust, a responsibility to pay forward the generosity and wisdom that had shaped her life. Invigorated by this newfound purpose, Kelly established a charitable foundation in her father's name, dedicated to providing educational opportunities and healthcare access to underprivileged communities. She poured her heart and soul into this endeavor, meticulously overseeing every aspect of its operations, from fundraising initiatives to the implementation of outreach programs. As word of her philanthropic endeavors spread, Kelly's foundation garnered widespread support and recognition. Prominent figures from diverse walks of life rallied behind her cause, inspired by her unwavering commitment to bettering the lives of those in need. With each passing year, the foundation's impact grew, reaching ever more communities and touching countless lives. Yet, amid the whirlwind of her professional and charitable pursuits, Kelly found herself longing for a deeper connection, a bond that would fill the void left by the absence of a family of her own. It was in this season of her life that she crossed paths with a kindred spirit, a man whose gentle nature and unwavering integrity resonated profoundly with her own values. Their courtship blossomed into a love story for the ages, a union founded upon mutual respect, trust, and an unshakable commitment to one another. In the warmth of his embrace, Kelly found solace and rejuvenation, a sanctuary from the chaos of the world beyond. As they stood before the altar, exchanging vows that bound their souls together for eternity, Kelly felt a profound sense of peace wash over her. This was not merely a union of two individuals but a merger of kindred spirits, each fortified by the trials they had endured, yet emboldened by the promise of a future intertwined. In the years that followed, their union was blessed with the pitter-patter of little feet, as they welcomed children into their lives. Kelly embraced motherhood with the same fervor and dedication that had characterized her professional endeavors, instilling in her offspring the values of compassion, resilience, and the unrelenting pursuit of one's dreams. 
as she cradled her newborn in her arms, gazing into the innocent eyes that held the promise of infinite possibilities, Kelly was reminded of the sacrifices her own father had made to ensure her happiness and well-being. It was in that moment that she vowed to be the beacon of unwavering love and support that her father had been, to nurture her children's aspirations and guide them along the path to self-discovery and fulfillment. With each passing year, Kelly's life became a tapestry woven with the vibrant threads of love, purpose, and the indelible legacy of her father's wisdom. She had traversed the treacherous terrain of heartache and betrayal, emerging from the crucible of adversity as a woman of indomitable strength and grace. In the twilight of her days, as she gathered her grandchildren around her, regaling them with tales of her life's journey, Kelly would often reflect upon the profound lessons she had learned. She understood that true wealth extended far beyond the confines of material possessions, transcending the fleeting allure of luxury and indulgence. The true richness of life, she imparted to her enraptured audience, lay in the bonds of love that bind us, the pursuit of purpose that ignites our souls, and the resilience to weather the storms that inevitably arise. It was these virtues, these beacons of wisdom, that she hoped to impart to her descendants, ensuring that the legacy of her father's grace and generosity would echo through the generations to come. As the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky with a kaleidoscope of hues, Kelly would gaze out upon the world with a serene smile, secure in the knowledge that her life had been a symphony of triumphs and tribulations, each note contributing to the masterpiece that was her journey.